So this is layer three. And in layer two, what we did is we established, we started to play with our palette. In this case, these big color shifts. So this is going from a purplish blue all the way through green back to a greener blue. So this big prismatic shift that moves our eye from large to small and small to smaller again, large to small again, and then we move the eyes. So we're actually gonna go from a lighter purple to a darker purple. And this cool palette that moves the eye is just so essential to get us back. I've taken some paint in layer two and just added to the surface that we created by randomly picking colors and just smashing them into the wet paint. Today, I've picked another palette and I'm gonna to start to build on that so that we have some interest staying within the palette we established. So I've got some medium and I've got this really beautiful dark color. And in this case, I'm gonna take a roller. This is called a brayer and it's a printmaking tool. And I'm gonna just get some paint on that roller and I'm gonna, and this is called charging the roller, by the way. I'm gonna charge the roller so I have a pretty even coat of paint. And I'm gonna real lightly start to catch the surface of this of the surface that I put down. And a few things are happening. In the process of creating, of putting paint down, I'm also picking up wet paint that was still there. So at each time, I, at some point, I'm gonna to have to wipe this off and add new paint on. Oh, look at that. So you don't know what's gonna happen, really. So I'm gonna come back and start to figure out and play with those spots of color. And this is just layer three. So what I'm doing now is complicating the color palette and making certain that the palette is interesting. And I have some sense of diminishment. At the same time I'm doing that, I'm gonna come back and start to play with this water's edge a little bit. Look how pretty that dark blue green plays against this lighter green. So rather than having that same color down here, which may or may not work, I'll probably change colors there. But this is gonna work nicely across here. And I'm just creating, again, a rhythm of either vertical reflection or horizontal surface. And I'm just going to play with that and start to, in an interesting, uncontrolled way, mix these colors. And it's just a really fascinating way for me to play with this level two and get color down and lose some control. Because, you know, this is part of the magic. It's how do you do something without knowing what's going to happen. So part of it is experience. Part of it is mistake and part of it is luck. But the biggest part of this is controlling your palette. And this is still layer three. So I'm just building complexity up, establishing, getting my color palettes to work, getting enough layer in here so there's some harmony in the piece. And I'm really letting some of these accent colors either stay or recognize where they are. To a certain extent, I'm able to even throw some paint on, which allows for a kind of a randomness that I can't get uh, without some sense of, uh, of, 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 uh, of luck. So in this stage, I know the color's gonna work. It's worked here. I'm gonna throw it on just enough so that it, and over the years, I've learned how to throw paint pretty accurately. It started at home with food and brothers. I'm gonna come back and just pull in some lights across this fluff mud area, just to break that up again. And remember the comment, we don't get magic at the end unless we start with magic. So this is the underpainting for layer three. I'll come back again with that same rubber tip tool and start to look at and recreate some of the rhythms that are needed to create some, some interest on the next layer. Layer four, five, and maybe if I needed six, are controlling the chaos that we've established in the first, second, and third layer. But we've already ascribed a great deal of control of this by keeping the palette minimal and creating a different surface for each layer. And that's pretty much the job of layer three. So we've, again, attacked the painting quickly. There wasn't a lot of time involved. And I, but it, there was a lot of pain, and I've just created harmony and interest and excitement, uh, and starting to play with the idea of where, what happens as I leave some colors and what areas I've got to reveal and leave alone. And so this is the job. I'll let this dry, and I'll come back with layer four.